Hey everybody, don't get anxious, get prepared. Your career engineer is right here. And today we're doing our Ask the Career Engineer. We're taking the live questions you may have right now for about the 15 minutes we're here together. But I also got these wonderful questions you guys sent me and then I'm gonna hit and answer. So here's what you need to do. Of course, feel free to invite others, share us, whatever platform you're enjoying us on, like, share, all that kind of good stuff. So you don't miss another show. And you know, we're gonna get right into it because you guys had some really cool questions. So don't get anxious, get prepared, coming right back. Let me make sure my sound's out right now. I just realized I didn't have everything up. Did a TV thing today. So remember, you can follow us everywhere, subscribe and all that kind of good, good stuff. And remember, tcenow.com is where you find everything about us, any upcoming events, our blog, our all kinds of stuff. And of course, you'll reach out to us anytime with a question or comment about this particular broadcast or anything under the sun. Just hit me up at info at tcenow.com. Dot com and all of our socials are available all day long. And those of you who are catching us live or later, I really look forward to your questions now as well as later. So we want to get into it. And like I said, it's March. March is the, you know, I, I did a television segment earlier today. And, you know, spring is in the air. And all of you wait until March employee, entrepreneur, and employer to do your thing, whatever. Like I said, Angela Bassett, do that thing. Like y'all do your thing now in March. I kind of believe you should do your thing in February, but that's another show. But anyway, the numbers are looking good for the spring season. The spring is upon us. So it's a great time to get out there. I am, I am so waiting for the new job numbers to see how this is really looking because last month looked pretty great. And like I said, this Friday is when the new numbers come out. If you are a subscriber of our TCE Friday, Friday Career and Business Weekly, you'll get those numbers right off the press when the Department of Labor releases them. You get them like 30 seconds later. Okay, so we're looking forward to see what the unemployment rate is, is this month, as well as those job gain numbers is really important. Last month, over half a million people got hired. That was pretty incredible. So let's see what we have to deal with this year. Remember, our current uh, unemployment rate, for those of you, employer and uh, employee, 3.4% at the time of us talking right now. Guys, it means this full employment, you can get what you want. I mean, you can go after it. To get it, you got to bring something to the table. You understand. But there's no reason. You can't say the economy is not in your favor because it really is. All right. So this is what you need to do. So we had a question, actually. It was emailed to me, which I love. And it was pretty deep and loaded. But I'm going to try my best to share at least some information. There's still a whole lot more that we need to explore and chat about in terms of, no pun intended, you know, this whole chat <laughs> thing, this whole AI thing. And I'm going to be blogging about it. Um, and I am actually getting my thoughts ready because, you know, the chatter, it chatter, right? No pun intended, is evolving i mean we had when this all this stuff came out like last year oh this new thing and folks fright or flight you know i'm my job is gone or my business is over or as the employer you know how can i use this to help me do my job better which might mean replacing an employee to the entrepreneur mm, is this something that can help my business or can it hinder my business? And everyone has an opinion on this thing. They really do. So, uh, but the question from uh, Carla out of Ohio said, she asked, how do you evaluate your current skills and develop some new ones in light of this whole chat GPT or, you know, Google has this bard that's coming out and I'm sure, and you guys have seen, this is not new. Everyone is talking about this. So I'm going to give a different take because you guys know I am your career engineer. And I think about these things a lot differently. I'm looking at them not just from a knee-jerk reaction, but let's look at the whole picture. That's my social work training. What can I tell you? We look at the whole picture, okay? So uh, um, skills, because everybody's like, where can I get training? What do I do? Um, is my job being evap evaporated? Um, I'm looking at this thing from a perspective a little differently. What I'm sensing, I'm reading some of the latest chapter by, chap, uh, chatter by folks brighter than me, like, who are the influencers and the guru and i'm seeing some that are scared to death like everything is being replaced and here are the 10 places you're gonna lose your job and that might be there might be some truth in that but there's also a, a conversation happening about okay can you work here's the two types of things here are the two types of employer entrepreneurs and employees is going to be impacted those who can work with it and those who refuse to okay meaning those who refuse to or can't find their 
their fit in it or a way to work with it, those are going to be the ones that will have to rethink their revenue generating stream. Okay. So it's, and, and you know, and this is not new because we had conversations and there has been tech, you know, technology innovations has been with us forever. The very platform I'm talking to you on is a, is a product of technology innovation. Did this take away all the jobs of folks who worked a hundred, you know, with camera and audio and streaming and television shows and script writing? Are those still with us? In fact, we found more, <laughs> more evidence of streaming. I mean, are we not you know, bombarded by live streaming everywhere? So, but there are some folks who were replaced. There are some skills that were definitely antiquated because technology changed the game. Every newsroom still have camera people. Every newsroom still have producers, but how they do their job has changed. So I'm coming from the skill set of, you have to decide right now as this new stuff is coming out, all this chatter since like last quarter, this new AI and how it's going to impact you. You need to do your proper due diligence to see where you can work with it. Okay. And the skills I'm talking about this, I know everybody wants to jump to trainings and jump to coding. And this was actually a follow-up thing, but I'm telling you, I, I want you to do the skill of thinking. I want everyone to think about where they are, like what skills they have the contributions they bring to the workplace or the business space as an entrepreneur, employer, what, what have you got to do your own self-assessment right now. Right. I mean, and this is where that gray matter comes in. And and this, I know may not be what a lot of folks want to hear because there are a lot of training programs popping up. Oh, I can get you. Listen, what have we seen that there's nothing new under the sun? What have we seen certain things, whether it's environmental or technology will have an evolution in the workplace. Evolution in the workplace is never going to stop. What you have to do is decide how how can I work with this? Let me give you a really case in point. And this is where I used to make errors. Yeah, me, me, yours, yours truly. I would say that I felt always, like 20 years ago, the job of being a bank teller is going to evaporate. Why? Because, come on, online banking showed up. The ATM showed Well, the ATM showed up first. And then we have online banking. And then we went from like online banking to the whole PayPal and the Stripe. And now we've got all kinds of stuff. We got cash apps and all this. If you were to walk into your brick and mortar bank, do you see a bank teller sitting there? Of course you do. They may not be 30 of them, but there are a few, right? And those who are working in banking in the human form, there are certain skills they need to acquire. Was the skill something they went to school for? Not necessarily, but it was something that they had to use their experience thinking about, okay, let's see, how am, am I am I affluent with technology? Let me get used to the way technology has evolved. You know, web 3.0, 5.0, you know, how the different interfaces and navigating the different operating systems, right? I mean, whether, you know, and so things of that nature, I mean, is there banking software that's unique to banking? Of course there is, but does it mirror and look like just about everything else out there? Of course it probably does. But it's that person who was able to navigate and understand and utilize, and this comes from experience working somewhere. I'm going to tell you, the thinking of the current skill you have, how is it going to intersect? where we are. And there isn't necessarily a training for that, guys. That's you recognizing who you are, what you bring, knowing, seeing the writing on the wall. Ooh, something new is coming our way. Okay. With all the gifts and talents I have, maybe I'm pretty, my IQ is stellar. Maybe I'm really good adapter uh, with technology. Maybe I'm also an exceptional writer and reader. Maybe this new tool can help me write smarter, write more accurately, right? Not replace me because there's a certain part in my writing ability that's uniquely me, right? And right, okay, using the word right, right? So the, these skills I'm saying, you guys have to figure this out. Now, not that yet, of course, can you get a career coach to help you? Of course you can, I'm sure you can. But there's not necessarily a training program for thinking. Um, you got, okay, you guys are reaching out to me here. I'm sure, there's not necessarily a training program for thinking. I'm telling you that there isn't one, but you have to use your own, your own grit and, and moxie. I mean, I'm doing the same thing. Okay. I, I there are people like consultants. Some of them are scared that the AI is going to replace them. Others are like, how can I use this? How can I incorporate this technology? Cause I'm not afraid of tech. I'm not afraid of tech into my world to help me do what? To, if I have 10 steps and I'm doing something, I can now get it down to three 
if I strategically use this new technology for what I'm doing. Now, if you're consulting on something that this AI world can totally take over, you might want to rethink what you're consulting on. I mean, I'm just keeping it. I mean, I'm like, for example, writers are a little, some writers are a little scared right now. I mean, some writers, in fact, I've seen, um, I've seen a couple of journalists on television who, which I, I want journalists to find a way to adapt early as well, because there are some TV segments you're watching that was totally created by AI. Totally. I mean, the script, the words, everything. And a journalist is saying, Hey, by the way, I didn't write this. AI did. And that's great, but it does sound a little robotic. And yes, there's tones it can mirror and stuff, but what it can't replace is you. So your new skill to work this thing is to figure out where what the, the essence of your, the, the, I say it all the time, the encapsulation of your genius, your unique essence, your experience, your know-how, okay, your flavor, those types of things AI can't reproduce. So find a way of intersection where you can adapt it to make what you do better, uh, smell better, I don't know, more effective, more efficient, more accurate versus being afraid of it. But but I do warn you, there are going to be some folks that will be, their jobs will not be as plentiful, maybe that's the word I want to use, <laughs> or redesigned. And that's the way it is, because that's happened with my bank teller, right? That's happened with my camera operator. Think about Hollywood. This, that's happened with when I look about, um, and I'm using, I'm trying to give y'all some for example uh, questions. Think about, and this, I hope it's not telling you my age, but anyway, Star Wars, when it was made way back when, you know, all those effects were done with incredible models and incredible simulation of people holding up a little uh, and flying it around. Do we do that now? No, we don't. CG, right? CG, CG. Who, who won in that thing? The folks who can, you don't have to code it, but you got to know how to use it. Or not. And those who refuse to lost their opportunity to generate some revenue in that space. So this is where I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you, use your gray matter because that's what's important. OK, uh, those of you tuning in, this is our Ask the Career Engineer. We do this the first Monday of the month at 12 noon. Uh, if you have a question or comment about things happening, anything I said here today or you have a question for me, please submit it. We will select some questions to air and talk about these things in about, you know, 15 minutes or so to answer any questions. Of course, I will, I welcome any live questions or comments on anything I have shared right there. And for, again, don't forget to visit us often. TCEnow.com is where you can find us. Now I had another question and actually I responded to this question on one of our YouTubes that we did not too long ago. And I want to thank um, Antoinette from Delaware for, for, for mentioning this. We were talking about layoffs and things last month. Cause that's, you know, we, you guys have heard the tech news and the layoffs were happening before the whole chat GPT conversations came up. What's going on? You know, our friend Twitter and I, I am a purist Twitter. I've been on Twitter since it started. I was a younger person then, but to see how it has evolved is interesting but she mentioned, well, hey, the folks on Twitter, you know, they let go of all 200 people or more on a Saturday. Like folks didn't get no notice. They Their Slack accounts were shut down. They couldn't get into their emails. By the way, you just lost your job. Like and she said, how can that happen? Is that because uh, is that an example of an at will state? So and I thought, you know, leave it to Elon to change the game for everybody else. How he you know, there's there's probably some economic policy, some employment law policy that was a little gray area that he and his crew found that he could get away with that. I, I was really shocked because here's the thing. When I share this on the, you can, I think you can look at our layoffs uh, email to get more detail. But to answer her question, um, you know, at will states are around. I mean, the state where I'm home quartered in is an at will state, which means you can leave at any time without cause, as well as the employer can do the same thing in terms of termination, right? That's so, you know, you, you I mean, we always do a customized, well, a, um, a professional two week notice. I'm, I'm a big fan of that because, you don't want to burn bridges, but you don't have to in an at-will state. And neither does the employer have to give you warning. Layoffs are a little different when it comes to federal law. And how Brother Elon was able to do this, that he must have found four words that said he can do this. So most times when you have an employer, and again, lawyer I'm not, nor do I pretend to be one on television, you got to give at least 60 days notice. There's a WARN Act. Um, I put that in that thing in our chat on the other uh, um, um, video. So do check it out that 
you know, the federal law says there's certain things you just can't do. He did it, though. And I'm, I feel some kind of way about that. But um, California is a unique state, but it was about 200 people let go. Really, I mean, exceptional type of talent, too. We're not talking, you know, uh, the, the person at the bottom of the totem pole. I mean, he let go of some nice fat cats with some great intellect. So how he got away with that and the feds, I, I would like to hope the Department of Labor is thinking about looking about that. Because when you let go of 200 people, you have more than like, what, 100 employees on payroll. There's some warnings you, you're supposed to give them. But... Elon didn't, and he probably will get away with it. I don't know. It's well, he probably he already has, hasn't he? So to her question, <laughs> I love that the big thing there that we're not supposed to do that, but somehow Twitter and Elon get to do whatever they like, right? That's what's up. So what's my warning to that, folks? Those of y'all let that little blue bird just uh you might want to consider some options for yourself. So remember, make sure you subscribe or follow us, like, and share. Again, if you have a question about anything I've shared this morning or any topic, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to have your emails and your comments. And then also, don't forget to catch us live on Thursdays. We have our live radio show, which is also a call-in. Check us out, radioshow.tcenow.com. And, uh, of course, you can listen to that on any place of your favorite podcasts and all that kind of good stuff. Well, between the chat, GPT, and Elon laying folk off anytime you want to. I think my service today here is done. I want to make sure you guys have an amazing week. Make sure it's a powerful one. Remember, don't get anxious, get prepared. And we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.